guys, Constance here. Welcome back to A Good Life Farm. So I am working on my second canning recipe of the week. Um, the other one is a tomato sauce uh, marinara sort of uh, recipe, which I believe that recipe, that video will be coming up after this one. So you can watch for that. Um, that one's actually started over there on the other side of the kitchen. So right now, I am starting a brine for some pickled green tomatoes for Mr. Smith back there, who just opened the door. <laughs> All right. So this is kind of a two-day recipe in that it's going to take at least two days to do this. Well, it'll take two days to do this because the tomatoes will actually have to sit overnight, which I'll get to in just a second. But to begin with, I've got a pot full of vinegar here, white vinegar, um, eight cups, two quarts, because, you know, it's, it's kind of good to make a little bit extra when you don't know exactly how much you need because that brine will keep. You can just stick it in the refrigerator and use it later on. So I'm going to put in two cinnamon sticks. about three tablespoons of black uh, peppercorns, a teaspoon of mustard seeds, and three tablespoons of minced garlic. And then the last thing I'm going to put in there is a couple hot peppers. These are some buenamolada peppers that I grew out there in the garden. And they're not actually fully ripened. When they're completely ripe, they'll get red, but they're almost there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the stem ends off, and then I'll just drop them down here into the vinegar. All right. So, cut off the tops, and I'm going to drop them in there, and now I'm just going to turn on the heat. I'm going to let this um, come up to a boil, then I'll reduce the heat, let them simmer for about four minutes, and then I'll just turn it off and let it cool. And then once it's cooled, I will strain this through um, some cheesecloth to get everything out of there. You could put all of the ingredients, all of the solids in a muslin bag if you have one of those or spice bag and do it that way. Um, that's an option as well. All right, so the next step in the pickled green tomatoes is to wash them all and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and the larger tomatoes I'm going to slice them. Of course I'm going to remove the cores, remove the blossom ends and after I slice them I'm going to put them in a bowl. The smaller ones like these black vernisage I'll just probably cut these in half or maybe quarter of them, quarter them and put them all in here and then I'm going to salt these with some pickling salt and I'm going to just liberally salt them stir them around let all of the tomatoes get nice and coated with the salt let them sit overnight and in the morning I will rinse them let them drain really good and then they will get brined and um, canned and processed and all of that. So that is what I'm going to work on. Cleaning up, slicing or quartering, salting, and letting sit. So I'll see you again after a while.
so it is now the next day and I am working on my pickled tomatoes, my pickled green tomatoes. So last night, just to kind of recap, I washed, I cut up, and then I well salted, uh, liberally salted the tomatoes with some pickling salt. And I just want you to see how much liquid uh, has been pulled out. I just want you to see how much liquid has been pulled out of these tomatoes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain this out and I'm going to rinse these really well to get all of that salt uh, off of these tomatoes. Alright, so I rinsed a little bit of the salt off. Pardon the cuckoo clock. So now what I'm going to, so just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to rinse my bowl here and then I'll just fill this with water and put the tomatoes back in there, kind of swish them around a bit, which will help loosen up any salt that is on there and then I'll drain them and, and just kind of spray them off again. I split up the two varieties of tomatoes, the itty bitty little ones and then the ones that had a little bit more size just so that when I'm packing them uh, in my jars, I think it'll look a little bit better. And you know, you kind of want a consistency when um, you're canning. That's, I mean, it, that's just me. You don't have to do it that way, but I think it gives a better end product. guys so here is the brine that I made yesterday and when I can these tomatoes this isn't going to be used straight we're going to dilute it by 50% so it's going to be half uh, seasoned vinegar and half uh, water so let me go grab that all right so while my brine is heating up I'm going to grab a few more things for these pickles so I've got an onion here that I have cut in half and I've removed the um, skins. Let me grab a little dish here. So each of these halves I'm actually going to go ahead and cut in half again so that it's quarters. And then these quarters I'm going to slice uh, pretty thin. And then as as I get them sliced up, I'll just toss them in this jar or this uh, hmm, this bowl over here to get them out of the way. So I've got my so I've got my tomatoes here that were salted and sat overnight to let them pull out some of that excess uh, liquid. I'm gonna grab some jars that I've got over here. Ooh, got that nosy. Now I don't know if I'm gonna actually need all of these jars, but I've uh, got them prepped anyways. Actually, I may need more jars, but I can only fit eight pints in my steam can over here, so we'll just see what we can do. All right, so my brine is heating up over there, and I've got everything else that I need to get started here canning. I've got my onions are sliced up but cut a little bit small. I've 
got some pickle crisp, I have some garlic, and I have some kosher salt. And I've got my tools over here, I got my dish of white vinegar, and so I'm gonna get started jarring all these up. So I will bring the camera down a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. These are being canned in pint jars, and in every jar, I'm going to put an eighth of a teaspoon of pickle crisp. Okay. I'm going to put one teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to put one teaspoon of minced garlic. All right, and then last but not least, I'm going to put in about a tablespoon or so of these sliced up onions. And I'm just going to kind of separate those as I put them in. And I actually don't know if I have enough jars for all of these tomatoes that I have prepped. Uh, so I may end up doing a second batch of these in a little bit. All right, and next I'm going to take my funnel here and I'm just going to start <clears throat> filling the jars with uh, tomatoes. And when you can these, you want to go to right about a quarter of an inch of headspace. And I know that one looks a little bit full, but when I shake them down, they'll go down there into place. All right, so I've got six pints here of the smaller tomatoes, and then I'll do another batch of the sliced tomatoes. I'll just set that jar aside for later. So my brine over here is nice and hot, and so the next step is going to be to fill uh, my jars with the brine. So move these a little bit closer here. Funnel. And this funnel, I've had a lot of questions about these. Uh, this is part of a set that I've got. It has the jar tongs as well as the magnet wand. And what is really great about this particular funnel is it has your headspace printed, um, if it'll focus, printed right on there. So when you set it on the jar, you know what your headspace is without having to measure anything. It's right there. So I'm going to put my funnel on there, grab my ladle, and I'm going to fill these up with, ooh, with the brine mixture up to a quarter of an inch headspace, which again, as always, is the space from the top of the contents to the top of the jar. So we're just going to get it kind of close to begin with. Because once I remove the air bubbles, uh, generally what's going to happen is that level is going to change a little bit because the space that had air now doesn't. And so your water level, your liquid level is going to lower down. Now, if you don't have one of these bubble wands, that's quite all right. You can just use like a bamboo skewer, 
or a chopstick, something like that. Something skinny that can just slide down there and get the air bubbles out. So we're just going to kind of wiggle this down in there. Go all around the all around the jar. Press the tomatoes back down in. And Duke wants in. And then once I've done this with all the jars, I'll double check the height of the liquid and I'll add a little bit more if I need to to get that level back up to the uh, quarter of an inch of head space. So I'm wiping down the rims of the jars to remove any residue that might be on there because you don't want your um, you don't want there to be anything on the on the glass on the edge because if there's any sort of residue oil anything like that it can hinder the sealing of your jars and so this is just a way to make sure that your rims are extra clean when you're doing this now i also can with uh, weck jars from time to time but when it comes to things like pickles uh, pickles often get shared from my house so I don't can pickles in weck jars because weck jars are a little pricey and I don't want them leaving my house <laughs> so anytime I can pickles they are going to be in traditional jars because that way if they don't come back to my house I'm not going to cry over it. <laughs> so now the tomato pickles are going to process for 15 minutes in a hot water bath canner, which is for high acid foods. Now this canner that you see behind me is obviously not a hot water bath canner. It is what is called a steam canner. It is a lightweight alternative to using a hot water bath canner and it is only good for high acid foods like pickles and jellies and jams and things like that. So the processing time is the same, however the way you do this is a little bit different. I do have a video where I pretty thoroughly explain how to use a steam canner and I will put a link to that uh, down below in the information or up in a card if you're watching this on YouTube. And again, the processing time for this recipe is, is 15 minutes for pint jars. I do not have an alternative uh, four quart size jars. This is just one that I do in pints. Alright, so there you go you guys. That is um, pickled green tomatoes or green tomato pickles, however you want to call them. Uh, these jars will sit here until tomorrow and tomorrow I will come remove the lids, check all of the seals, label them and store them away. And these will sit unopened for at least at least two weeks, four weeks would be even better, which would give uh, the, the tomatoes time for that brine to really work and ac actually pickle the tomatoes and develop all of that flavor. And so Mr. Smith is going to have to be very, very patient before he can give these a try. So when I label them, I will not just put the year on here, but I'll actually put the date 
because that way we can remember uh, when I canned them so you can know when to uh, break into them. So I will put a printable version of this recipe on my website. So now that those are done, I have another video that I've kind of been working on at the same time and I'm going to head to the other side of the kitchen and work on that one, which you will be able to see after this video goes live. So much happening here in the Homestead Kitchen. So thanks for hanging out with me here again at A Good Life Farm. I'll talk to y'all next time.